Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Weekend Academy. And today we have a very special, I keep calling these episodes. Those are not episodes. These are just trainings that we have. But today I'm going to interview or chat with another entrepreneur for you guys. And her name is Laura Donnelly. And she is the founder of Dancing with Ease. It's a company where she gives uh, online and in-person workshops on how to coordinate your brain and body movement and apply a certain technique, which is Alexander Technique, in her teachings. So I'm really excited to welcome Laura on our Weekend Academy. And Laura, welcome here, and I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Manasi, I really uh, was happy that you invited me, and I look forward to sharing just some pieces of my journey in the hopes that that inspires other people. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, first of all, tell us in detail what you do. I have given a glimpse of it, but tell us in your words what you do. I teach the Alexander Technique. And I have a past history as a dancer and dance teacher, dance educator. So I have a lot of body knowledge and um, also dealing with, uh, you know, performance anxiety, rehearsals, memorization, uh, what to do when you're on stage and things go wrong because mm-hmm. that happens. it happens all the time. <laughs> and, um, and also, I, I started training in ballet, which is a very specific and detailed uh, dance technique. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it, it fit me, my personality, but it also fit a piece of my personality that's not so helpful, which is the area of perfectionism. <gasps> <laughs> we all have it. We all have it. <laughs> right. And... Um, and so, so like in ballet, there is good line and bad line. And, and so these things get kind of split and um, nobody's perfect. No body is perfect for dance. And, um, but it's very easy to get down on yourself and to uh, start to work really hard. There's this idea that you have to uh, work really hard to get what you want. You see, mm-hmm. when I do that, I lean forward. I push down, I push on you through Mm -hmm. the screen. Mm. I started, uh, a friend who was a dancer said, oh, I went to this great workshop. You have to come with me. It's Alexander Technique. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And and I went and it's basically a technique that teaches you how to get out of your own way. How to shut off the perfectionist thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is, is like when you want something, when your desire is really high, the desire is good because it sets you on a path towards a goal. Mm -hmm. But if you have the feeling, I have to get this or else everything is terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, then suddenly I'm not easy. And you can hear the change in my voice when that happens. Mm. And so what happened at that workshop for me is, is I had this experience of how I had felt in my body when I was uh, really young, mm-hmm. just free and able to move and kind of a happy joyousness. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I better study this because I need this, obviously. So I spent a quite a long time because, because the brain is so subtle, mm-hmm. how quickly it takes something that is good I said, well, this is good. So if thinking this one time is good and helpful, if I think it 10, 100 times, it's Mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Not really. Mm. (laughs) Not really. And so for me, this was a, um, well, I used to tell people I did not have a rheostat, you know, a a volume control. Uh I was like either on or off. Just no in between. And so this kind of helped me develop a, a more, more range, more, have more access to the range that I have as a human. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, so the basic way you do that is, is you just scan your body and you say, I wonder how easy my neck is. Mm -hmm. And that just that question allows your, your 
mental brain that's chattering mm-hmm. step back, and your body does its natural thing, which is very natural, organic, perfect physical organization. Mm-hmm. And um, same thing is like true. If you spend a lot of time at the computer, mm-hmm. you get into the screen and you're typing and typing and typing and seeing, you can hear my voice go. That. Yeah. So what happens when that happens is you, is you crunch the back yeah. of your neck. Yeah. And as soon as you do that, blood flow is diminished. Breath is diminished. Thinking is diminished. Mm-hmm. Kinesthetic uh, action. The, all the neurological impulses from your brain to mm-hmm. the rest of your body are impinged. <laughs> And you say, well, well, I just won't do that. I'll just mm-hmm. keep my neck straight. Oh, mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. I just keep my neck straight and tense. That was not the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just this, like a game. Yeah. Tell us more about when you started this business and what made you jump into it as a business. Okay. For some people, well, and even a few months ago, I was thinking of what started me down this path was really kind of a disaster. <laughs> I had uh, moved back to Kansas from Arizona. My mom was 84, and I wanted to be in the same state. And mm-hmm. uh, I got recruited for a teaching job to teach dance at a university. I was really excited. I thought it was my dream job. Mm-hmm. And I, a lot of great things happened, and it, it was going really well. But there were underlying academic politics that I did not deal with easily. <laughs> <laughs> no ease whatsoever. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I hated office politics too. And um, and and there was there was stuff in the pipeline that I didn't know anything about, including the a plan. A budgetary cuts and a plan to reduce the program to a minor. Mm-hmm. When that happened, my line was cut and um, I had no job. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a crisis. But the exact same week that my contract ended, my mom, who had um, cardiopulmonary obstructive disease, mm-hmm. um, had a what they call an exacerbation. And so she had a, a steep decline in health. Mm. And um, she had been dealing with this for a long time. By this time, she was 87. And um, I went to the doctor with her, and she, she talked to the doctor, and she said, I'm an, I want to go into hospice care. Mm-hmm. And so I had no job, and she was in another town. My brother lived in New York, and um, so we talked. And he's a freelance sound engineer, designer. Mm-hmm. He could bring his computer set up with him in his truck. And so we just stayed with our mom for the next six months. Mm-hmm. which was great mm-hmm. and um well hear that squeak it wasn't exactly great <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it was it was good for all of us to come to a conclusion mm-hmm. but it was hard it wasn't easy mm. and midway through it I thought well it really is a blessing that my job ended because if I had been trying to go back to work I would have been completely stressed out I would have had to, you know, figure out substitute the whole, it would have just been a disaster. So I just decided to go with what was happening. <clears throat> and uh, after my mom passed away, I was the person in charge of settling the estate. And then it had been about a year and I'm like, uh oh, now what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to cough. Hang on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so I had had some time to do some reading and I had started blogging and I had always, I had been doing the Alexander technique since the late eighties. And I had always thought that this would be a great thing to do as I got too old to be in the dance studio, you know, and jump and roll and do all of that kind of stuff. And that it would be a good thing to do someday. And I said, Oh, I think it's someday. Uh. <laughs> I think now is someday. <laughs> <laughs> and and I realized I needed to uh, be able to do this online in an online environment. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, you mentioned about my story and, and my family have been self-employed people for a really long time. I was self-employed a lot. I never considered myself an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. um, just a self-employed worker, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's an idea again. So yes. I said, well, what if I decide that I'm not, just a self-employed person who's barely getting by. One mm-hmm. day, I'm a consultant. 
Mm -hmm. What if I'm an entrepreneur moving Alexander Technique teaching into the online space? Mm -hmm. And somehow I stumbled across B school and I enrolled and I mean, I didn't know what an opt-in was. I didn't know what a lead page was. I knew I needed a web page. I have, blogs sprinkled around on medium and this site called bb and linkedin and you know it, it just like mm. so then i got i got focused i made a website i ran into some other uh ladies uh at emily and abigail at the think creative collective which is mm -hmm. for creative artists which appealed to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um and I started, I, because I think of the, the B-School list and everything, I, I started getting onto different lists and finding different things. Mm -hmm. and so they had a five-day challenge on what can you sell right now. Mm -hmm. I do bookkeeping, mm -hmm. financial organization, accounting, taxes. Is that what you did when you were working for somebody else? It's part, well, it's part of what I've done all along. So like, oh, I said, okay. Okay. This is like this just spider web thing. Yeah. So as a performing artist in New York city, as a young dancer, I did all this bookkeeping stuff. On okay. Mm -hmm. You make extra money. Yeah. It was just something I, I developed as a skill. Yeah. A skill. Yeah. And, a side gig. and, um, but I had already two clients. And so, so I'm like, Oh, what can I sell right away? I can sell this. And so now I have two businesses. <laughs> <laughs> As an entrepreneur, I have two businesses, but my focus with the, the bookkeeping and financial stuff is perfectly easy business management. Oh, okay. So it's got embedded in it, these Alexander principles. How easily can we organize your finances? Mm -hmm. How easily can you keep everything together? How easily can you do what you need to do? So I love it. Next time, you don't have a big headache. Yes, I love it. And so... <laughs> It's a side branch, but it's not different then. Yeah, so your operating principle behind it is the same, the ease, moving yeah. towards ease. So I wanted to make some steady income while I gave myself time to build up my skills to really sell the thing that's most important to me. Very and smart, yeah. Rather than sell it, it's like what you said before. Share my joy and enthusiasm mm -hmm. and how it's helped me and how it's helped people I know and offer it if it's the right thing for somebody else. Yeah. So that's kind of my journey, how I got started with my, my current businesses. So, so which year was this when you started that bookkeeping business? Oh, that was last year in June. Last year in June. Okay. So that's when you, you started thinking that, okay, what can I sell right here, right now? And from there, now you have already had more time and more, um, I guess, um, I would say confidence in your journey to start teaching what it is that you now are doing, which is the Alexander Technique moving towards ease. That's excellent. And this is a great point for new entrepreneurs to learn that many times I have seen entrepreneurs where they are, they feel like, should I quit my job completely before I I set up my business and even though that's how I did it, I wouldn't recommend that to everybody. Everybody has their different journey. So you have to see what is right for you. So for you, that job, when that went away, it was a good thing for you because it worked out with your schedule and spending time with your mother and that was fine. But then second time when you came around with it, you said, how can I create money right now? so that I have that stability and then go into what I love doing and build it up while I am doing this. So there is no shame. There is no embarrassment and there is no, it's actually a smart decision, wise decision to do it that way to say that I'm going to feel, do whatever it takes for me to feel stable and feel secure right now, financially, emotionally, and then build my business. So thanks for sharing that. Um, and you go ahead, go ahead. Important is is that it took the pressure off my most important focus. Yes. yes. And if I had been demanding that I immediately cover all my bills with yeah. the Alexander technique, I wouldn't have been able to figure out how to talk about it. Yeah. The best way to promote it. And I might have quit because I might have had to go get some other job to pay the mortgage. Right. 
and this this whole idea of pivoting and a side piece that just opened the door for me you yeah know? and as my alexander practice grows i i just finish with a bookkeeping client and right. i just have one i add an alexander client yes of a new bookkeeping client yes and then i just balance you know then then eventually i will just be doing most that of one them. business yes yes exactly so that's that's very smart and you said you have written in your um a web page about me page that as a child you know that i'm born to be a dancer that that's that was just my thing i love dancing and body movement and so at what point did you feel that you want to turn it into a career? Because you are a professional dancer. You worked as a professional dancer in New York. I think it's for seven years, you said, right? At least in New York for seven years. A long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah, long time. <laughs> so was there, did you, as a child, you knew it? But while deciding a career, did you go towards other careers or you just knew that I want to be a professional dancer? I actually I have a journal uh, in and I have the program I saw Alvin Ailey's company do this piece called revelations uh -huh. and it's it's just a powerful powerful dance piece and I was and my mom took us to concerts. she was a dance teacher so she took me to concerts all my life and I was in the audience and I'm watching this and I go that's what I want to do how old were you I was, uh, probably 12 oh wow okay and so I, the things I did, you know, I went to school, I, uh, I stayed in high school, I didn't, um, sometimes if you want to be a professional dancer, they send you away to, uh -huh. at the time you're 14 or 16 to a professional school. Okay. But my mom said she couldn't, she couldn't face doing that. My, my dad had died when I was nine. Mm -hmm. He didn't know anybody where to send me. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed home. And it was okay because I didn't have a perfect body for ballet. A little bit mm. too short, a little bit too curvy for the time that that um, it was happening. That was the standard. Oh. Yeah. Um, I was pretty much a perfect ballet body for the 1950s, but I was becoming an, a, a young adult in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how people put these standards on some things that is so so good and so fun as ballet. Yeah. But I did, I had what I think of now, you know, and this is the important thing about reflecting backwards is I had a really well-rounded life. I took piano most of the way through high school. I had a horse, which I wouldn't have been able to do in a big city. I was able to grow up in close proximity to my aunts and uncles, my grandparents, my cousins, and um, a kind of thing that that doesn't always happen in today's world that mm. provided me with a really nice uh, foundation. Really nice mm -hmm. foundation and um then i then i met some really wonderful teachers and one of my teachers said to me early uh, composition teacher well this is the next thing that happened is i was at a workshop we did choreography classes making up dances and i you know wow this was really cool so I, I went to her, I said, I want to be a choreographer. And I was probably 23, yeah. 22, I was young. <laughs> she, says, she says, great, here's what you do. You go and audition for everyone. You dance with as many people as you can. You don't stay with anybody longer than three years or you won't be able to get their movement style out of your body very easily. Mm. It would have become my habitual way of moving. She said, go ahead and make dances. Make as many dances as you want, showcase, do whatever. Don't expect to make anything really important until mm -hmm. you're over 30, maybe 35. Mm -hmm. I was like 22, 23. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, well, you can perfect your craft, mm -hmm. but you won't have a very, you, you won't have had enough life experiences, both good and bad, mm -hmm. to have a pool of information from which to craft art mm. you can make dances you can make very pretty visually interesting dances you can address topics but until you know you had your heart ripped out and stomped on and you 
won an Olympic medal or whatever was the thing you wanted to do in your life until you've had these things go up and down for you. Mm -hmm. Her belief was that you, you didn't have the human experience to make a piece of art that would really connect. To other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So I went off and did that. Mm -hmm. And then I did the bookkeeping on the side. Mm -hmm. and I got a job and I got to tour to Europe, which was one of my number one, you know, like checkbox things. Is dancing. And that, that was as a professional dancer too, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, that was awesome. And uh, I just, I just was always doing the next thing that seemed interesting. Ah, oh, such a big impor important point. Yeah. Uh, and gathering information and uh, taking taking things that were good. I I did have a, a like I went back to graduate school, which was kind of funny when I was forty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 40. <laughs> that was also a fun adventure because I thought I wanted to teach in the university and this will come back to my dream job. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a lot of professional experience, but I, uh, I felt like I needed the credential to uh, work in the university in, in the late nineties, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And, and I had a wonderful time. I met great people. Mm -hmm. I, um, it was actually the beginning of the internet. There was no, almost no information published online about the Alexander technique. Now you can search Alexander technique and find a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, copyright law changed horrendously between 1998 and 2002. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't this online platform. I mean, I yes. don't know. Yeah. Existed. Great. And, um, so I think this doing whatever came next has served me well because I love learning. And so then new technology comes along mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, how can I, how can I do something with this? What is this about? Mm -hmm. And, um, but what I discovered now, two years after that, two years, three years, going on three years after that other job fell apart and all mm -hmm. is that job didn't suit me. It mm -hmm. was, full of schedule constraints that are not life enhancing. Mm -hmm. I work a lot. I love to work mm -hmm. on, on the things that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't love to teach ballet class at eight in the morning. Mm. That's not, that's not my body. That's mm -hmm. not good for my knees. That's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. And I, like we talked in the beginning, mm, politics, not good, you know, I kind of am really direct. Mm -hmm. This is how I feel, mm -hmm. you know, and if somebody is really uneasy and stuff, I'm apt to say, are you doing okay today? Well, people don't really want you to ask that. Mm. You know? They're all busy there. Yeah. You know, you know, they got their mask on and they yeah. really didn't want to know that you saw behind it. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and so also, I've started watching the people I know in academia, which is kind of sad, and they are so unhappy. Mm. You know, I have to grade all these papers, my students are blah, 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 you know. I mean, I'm like, dude, you're working like seven months of the year. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. You should be one of the happiest people on earth. Well, that's probably not really wise to tell them that either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have no remorse. Because it got me here. Yeah. And I really am happy here. And I really think that I will be able to make, a, to give more to people in this environment than I could. I taught a lot of principles of Alexander Technique in the dance studio, but that's a very small world. Mm -hmm. And this is a very broad world. Mm -hmm. And I just... I just think that if you look at what you did mm -hmm. in your life, you can see where all the pieces were leading to where you are now. Mm. Yes. And, and I had to, I had to kind of pop that bubble that that was my ideal job. And that sort of just popped about mm, three weeks ago, maybe. 
Mm. Even before I said, you know, I saw your, your notice that said you, you know, were interviewing people and I, yeah. I'm going to write to her because she sounds <laughs> interesting, you know, and I'm like, and that wasn't my ideal job. So anything that is interesting is on my, is on my possibility plate. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of random. I'm sorry. sorry. No, 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 no. No, this is good because I, I think there are so many points that you made in this one. And the most important ones were that stood out to me was you always follow your path of joy and what seems interesting to you because that's going to lead you in the direction of that ideal job, dream job, whatever you're born to do. And it's so important. The other one that you brought up is whatever happens in life leads you to certain it's it's happening for a reason, so to say. It's happening for a reason, even though at times it seems like this is not right for me. I don't like this. Or those experiences build you up to really ultimately share what you're born to do. And that's, that's so good as a reminder for us because when we are going through that tough phase in life, it just feels so hard. And we are all there. I mean, we have all experienced it. And when we come out of it, then we look back and say, Maybe I wouldn't have that happen to me again, but I'm grateful for that to have happened at that time. So it's, it's really, as we look back, or for somebody who wants to reverse engineer, say somebody like me, I like that process of, so for somebody who wants to reverse engineer, for if you want to start a business, you have no idea where you want to start, look at your experiences, look at what you gravitated towards, look at what you, what, skills you have learned along the way and make try to put it all together and that can be your business at least to get started get you started um so thanks for sharing that it's a good journey to hear oh, my another one that i feel is a hurdle for new business owners is where do i find my first clients so you had an idea okay i want to do bookkeeping now that's something i can sell right now and then later on you wanted to sell the alexander technique but that was related to applying it in your life, not just bookkeeping or business management with ease. Now you're talking bigger. Where did you find those first clients for bookkeeping and the other business? My very first bookkeeping client mm -hmm. actually is a locksmith. Mm -hmm. um, well, my first bookkeeping client in this version of things. This version, yes. Is a locksmith and uh, he lives in my area. And so, so I have a hybrid practice, right? I meet with him sometimes and sometimes I do a lot of stuff online. Yes. And, uh, well, okay. Before I decided I was going to start my website and do all this, I took a job to manage a, uh, natural foods grocery store and it mm -hmm. was a disaster. It was a disaster. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it was such a disaster that the exit door was bolted shut and the panic bar was broken and it had been for six years. Wow. Yes. And so, you know, like I call a landlord and I go, dude, the door is broken. Look at that's not a picture. They go, well, you have other exit out the back. I said, yeah. no, maybe in the design six years ago, but they put freezers back there. <laughs> this is, this is our emergency exit. <laughs> and they said, okay, fix it. So I hired this locksmith. Yeah. So I met this guy, and it turns out his wife uh, waits tables at a restaurant that we like to go to. Mm -hmm. And we ended up just being there and um, having supper together. Mm -hmm. And then he said, well, you know, I think I uh, did my taxes wrong in 2014. Could you look at that? And yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And so, so it just like, like that. And I yeah, said, you, just you did, you should have gotten a refund, but you paid in, and here's what we could change, and we can amend it. And he goes, okay, I want to hire you. Now, now this is a, this is bad. This is bad piece. I like this guy. And, um, but he says, I should pay you $100 an hour. I go, oh, no, that's too much. You did really did say that? that? No, Laura, no. <laughs> People are willing to pay you and you said no. That's that's Goes good. against everything I stand for. <laughs> that, was a, that was a couple of years ago. I'm better now. <laughs> that's yeah. good well, I, so can i just say something here yes you are the first one who said somebody offered it to me and i didn't take it everybody else that like all the entrepreneurs i have talked about in talked with and including myself we were like 
oh, we just didn't know we could charge higher. Or we just didn't think that somebody would pay us higher. That's why we didn't charge. And we slowly climbed that ladder by overcoming our own mindset. You're the first one who is like, I want to pay you. And they're like, yeah, I don't think you should. <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. Really, That's too really much. Really no, no, no. <laughs> I know. I know. So all different stories. I'm loving this because entrepreneurs are so varied. They go through so many different journeys. You continue yours. Well, okay. Part of this is coming from dance, which is a semi-impoverished field. There's never enough money in dance. There's never enough jobs. We are always underpaid. This is part of the thing about the university job is, is well, they don't understand us. They don't like, I'm like, dude, Everybody understands dance if you just tell them that we all are dancing all the time. Yeah. You know. And it's but, such a natural thing to do. Yeah. But it yeah. wasn't a mindset, right? Yes. So, um, so that's been part of my entrepreneurial journey is to say, wow, this work is valuable. I have a unique approach. I can do this. And I have to accept that I'm worth this. And this is, this is a piece. Yeah. A little tricky. And when, when he first wanted to hire me, I was still coming out of this, taking care of my mom, being, um, having my job disappear, feeling, um, feeling like a failure pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And so I was not in a position to say, awesome, that's great. Let's shake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is what I would do now. Yeah. Yep. And, um, but then he was going to buy a house, mm -hmm. like his realtor. Then she recommended me to another client. Mm-hmm. And that's how that grows. Oh, okay. So, that. sorry. So, so then, so then, when he offered you hundred dollars per hour, you just didn't accept it, and you said, "No, I will do it for cheaper." Yes, because he was starting out, and I felt like he needed more support. And and I'm but like, <laughs> but now I'm like, this is what this service is worth to him. Yeah, you know, and I should. That was not that. Two things I didn't do. I didn't respect his value of this service. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't hear how much he needed someone to take this off of his plate. Yeah. Which is by, by offering me that rate, which was more than he charges mm -hmm. to unlock a car, which doesn't quite take an hour, but about. Yeah. Um, but now I'm coaching him on how to bid up when he does a bid. That's excellent. So, I love it when student becomes the teacher. So I, I learned from my mistakes. Yeah. And, and, am, am, and am able to, to do that. And the last time he put in a big bid and he came back and he said they accepted it. I said, you don't sound too happy. He said, I could have made it higher. They didn't even try to negotiate. <laughs> That's well, what you there. find out. Yeah. That's it. But, yeah. but yeah. I said, was it more than you were going to ask for in the first place? He said, well, yeah, at least twice what I was going to ask in the first place. Wow. Look at, look at that. That's a yes. win. Yes. You know, absolutely. First client, that was a win. There was a drop off at the win, but, but I'm that's more. a learning experience though. Yes. That's how you learn. And the reason I'm so glad you brought it up is because almost every entrepreneur I'm talking to brings up this issue. And it's so such an issue that we all have faced it. And I want new entrepreneurs to know about it too, that this is going to happen. It's absolutely okay. Because you beat yourself up afterwards saying, oh, I could have charged more. But no, it's just part of your growth. You are going to charge what feels comfortable to you at that time. And it's absolutely okay. It's part of the journey. So it's, it's okay. As strongly as I tell women that you have to negotiate salary, you have to ask for uh, what, what you, your service is worth to other people. I do know that that's, that's our journey. We have to take that journey. So what is the most enjoyable part for you as you look back on that journey to see this is what I love in my business? Other than, of course, the, jo the job, the job itself. You love doing that. What else? I think I really love learning new things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's what, that's the, one of the main reasons I really enjoy the Alexander technique is because it's always learning with each new client or student, mm -hmm. but also this whole journey through the internet has been learning about opt-in pages. And, uh, I put together a, a free book to, mm -hmm 
get people on my mailing list. Mm -hmm. and what, are, what did I just learn the other day? I learned how to make a template in my email so that when I respond to people, it's, it's there. It's already I, there. I can easily personalize it, but I not have to write each email by hand. Yes. So I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, this is so cool. And um, then I learned something else the other day. I can't remember what it is. But, oh, I'm really loving, I've, I've been using this free product called Trello. Mm, yes. Um, uh, keep track of what I'm doing. And I was, I, at the beginning of January, you know, everybody's like, get your year goals and all this stuff. And I was, I was feeling pretty pressured. And I spoke to my Alexander Technique um, teacher. I have a, like a supervision group, you know, because mm -hmm. work, work. And uh, I, I was like, I, I have so much, I have so much I have to do and I can't get into this and that, and that, and that, and that. And he goes, he's so, he's so funny and so smart. What if you just made a list of things that you could do in 10 minutes every day? You know, just make an entire list and commit to every day doing one of those 10 minute things. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, cause I was like, well, I don't have time to finish my blog and I don't have time for this and the day, you know, and like, and he's like, uh, go back to the easy thing. <laughs> 10 minutes. And, and then I realized I could break a, like a big project into 10 minute things. Yes. And if I had an hour, I could do five or six of those. Mm -hmm. And then I got the brilliant idea from someone else. Of course, I, someone else said that she had a list of done things. Yeah. Uh, did something. She moved it onto the Trello board for done. Uh huh. And so now my done thing is like really this long. long. But I can go back and see what I did. Yeah, the visual motivation. And I can, I, I also like if, if I was supposed to send an email to somebody and I did it, on my to-do list is follow up with that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like I broke that into two parts, but I never have to remember it anymore because I was trying to remember everything I had to do yeah. all the time in my head. And um and I had said earlier that I tried several different project management things and to-do lists. And this, the, the Trello thing has cards and lists and boards and, and it just really works for me. It, mm -hmm. it works for how I think and how I can visualize things. And it's a place to collect ideas so that I don't have post-it notes everywhere and notes <laughs> on the phone in the notes section and important stuff in my email. And yeah. I still send stuff to my email that says put on Trello, but then yeah. I put on Trello and I delete it. Yeah. And so then it's all in one place. So I got blog ideas there. I have marketing ideas there. I had contact you there. Yeah. And then I had set appointment with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Those little bit of tasks. That's how I work too. We actually did a whole series of videos in the weekend Academy for this whole purpose of how to get organized with your ideas. And have you heard about the concept of bullet journal? No. Okay. So Google that concept. It's the same concept that you keep one notebook for everything. So somebody who wants to keep it in paper, they can do that. You are doing basically the same concept in Trello, but bullet journaling, you also add all your ideas. Say for example, you may have ideas. Oh, I, when I talk to Manasi, I want to share these three points. I want to make sure I hit them. Those become your collections in bullet journal and you put the collections with your to do items. Oh, right. So you yes. put everything together. So now when I walk out of the door, I only grab one notebook. Everything that happens in the meeting goes in there and everything that happens, it's some ideas that come to my mind. Everything goes in that one notebook. And as you go through it, you have everything at your fingertips. Yeah. So it's, it's a method for people who like paper and who do not want to switch on computer every single time they do something. I personally, I'm always on computer. I'm on digital, but I still use Google Journal. But anyway, so look it up. It might be something interesting for you. Um, so uh, one thing I want to ask you before we leave you is uh, what lessons have you learned in your journey that you think a new entrepreneur should hear about? Like what would you advise them to look out for? Okay. You're never, you're never too old to start. Mm. You know, I'm, I mean – it's when it's the right time, just go. It's, um, it's never too late to change direction. 
So if you have an idea, you know, like I had my idea for my Alexander thing, it was kind of percolating for a really long time. Mm-hmm. But to do the business management really freed me up. Yeah. And it didn't take that much time or energy. So that was, that was a shift in direction. It wasn't a complete about face, but uh, open. You got to kind of be open. Mm-hmm. Look at opportunities. Um, look for opportunities to share. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you hadn't asked for people to uh, talk to you, I wouldn't have met you. And this is cool. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> um, and, and if I had, you know, if I hadn't been feeling good about myself, I said, oh, she won't want to talk to me. You know, then I could have just passed that up. Yes. And, and if, I, if I said, well, hey, I do this. And if it's interesting, cool. And you say, yes, then that's great. If you say, well, this is not the right time for that or it's not really a fit. Then I say later if it is okay, yeah, right? Well, that's a, just a like an openness to opportunity. Yes. The next thing is to recognize when opportunity happens. Mm. I think that this is hard. It is hard. Yeah, when you're not open to it, you may not even recognize that this, this is, is an opportunity. He wanted to pay me a hundred bucks an hour, and I'm like, oh, that's too much. But I was not recognizing that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> right. I won't miss that one. Right. Uh, what else is uh, to keep going? Just keep going. Like that that little ten minute thing a day. Just yeah. make sure you have an idea. Back out to to the steps. You know, like this is where you want to end, and this is what has to happen in the way to get there, and then just start walking. The yeah. only way you get anywhere is by putting one foot in front of the other. I don't think that you can leapfrog. Mm-hmm. It, it just doesn't happen. And um, learn from your mistakes. You know, yeah. like we talked, we've already talked about that several times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. And we all make mistakes. That's the biggest part is we have to look at mistakes as learning steps, not as failures, but as learning steps. Because without them, how would we learn? We are not born with everything, knowing everything. So we have to learn it. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And so um, that's, I think that's my main, my main thing. And well, don't be afraid. Don't be, af- don't be, how can you tell somebody not to be afraid? Ah, oh, this is key. The same sensations of fear mm-hmm. in your body, butterflies in your stomach, little shortness of breath, faster heartbeat. Those are exactly the same physical sensations as excitement. Yes. Yeah. I have heard that before. Yes. They're the same biological sensations. And so this, I used to teach my dancers this. If when you feel this, instead of telling yourself you're scared, tell yourself you're excited. I like that. I like that. And it's, and it's not denying your body's physical response. Yes, but we're shifting it. It's shifting it. Yeah, yeah. So, so what you're saying is, when you you may be scared of something, tell yourself, "I'm excited at this point to face this," and that opens up then your perspective to then maybe recognize an opportunity that you didn't know existed before. Right. Right. So, just like we talked earlier about negotiations for a salary raise, yes. instead of saying you're afraid to ask for this. Say you're excited to see what opportunities might come out of asking for this because the employer might not give you the raise you wanted, but they might make your job more interesting Mm -hmm. or they might say, I want to give you this raise, but you need these specific skills first and we have a training program for you. And then they, then they're mentoring you and moving you in the direction you want to go. But if, if, you're afraid and you're rigid, then, then they might not even offer that. Right. Because they don't see a willingness to grow and change. Yes. Yeah. And we have no shortage of willingness to grow and change on the weekend Academy members. There are learners here. Yes. Very good. I mean, I feel so grateful every day to be working with people like these who want to learn, who want to grow. And they're so dedicated to creating the life that they want. And we use, you hit on all the points that we value in the Weekend Academy, like take small steps because that's the way to grow. Every week we try to learn a new skill. 
where that becomes part of our repertoire. Now we are learning it. And now as we start using it, we are growing towards our goal in a career. It doesn't happen overnight. You slowly move. So you hit on all the points that I, I want my members to really value. And thank you for doing that. Now, one last thing I want our members to know is how can they work with you if they choose to do so? Because Alexander Technique, it seems like it's something that can help us help them in their career goals. It can help them in their life goals. So I just want to put that offer out there that if they want to work with you, how can they work with you? They can find me at my website, mm-hmm. com, And uh, I have a free ebook there that tells a little bit more about Alexander Technique, if that was interesting to them. Or they can ask questions, read the blog, sign up for a quick free consultation. Yeah, I have a little at ease club that's starting up. <laughs> um, I also am on Facebook at Dancing with Ease, and I have a profile at LinkedIn. And my my happiest thing is to help people. And so I would love for people to just even drop by and join the mailing list so they can get notice of blogs occasionally. Absolutely. And if you're interested more in that, go download the free ebook that Alora has on her, on her website. It will tell you more about the Alexander Technique and you can dig down deeper and see it is, if it is something that is right for you at this time. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for joining us. And thanks for sharing your experiences, your stories from childhood and how you started your business. How did you get your first clients? I know all this information is useful for every new entrepreneur because as you're learning, as you are not learning, but thinking about going into entrepreneurship, listening to other journeys is not just inspirational, but it's a learning experience. You see all different ways the businesses are built and you understand that there's no one way of doing it. You just have to find out what is right for you and listening to all different entrepreneurs helping. uh, It helps you see that everybody's journey is different. So thanks for bringing your journey to us today. And um, I, I look forward to talking to you soon again. Me too. It's a pleasure to meet you. And this was just fun, just fun talking and sharing. I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, Absolutely. Getting a chance to meet you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you came. Bye everybody.